Let's tie it all together by animating elements of our scene across time and controlling the character's movement and scale across the scene. The first thing we need to do, of course, since we only have one frame right now, is to extend our frames. What we'll do is go all the way to frame 80, click and drag across all layers, and then choose Insert, Timeline, Frame. We now have a frame span that goes from frame 1 all the way to frame 80. The first thing we'll do is animate our character from one side of the stage to the other. So for that, let's go ahead and actually zoom out about 50%, because what we'll want to do over on frame one is to start the character off somewhere around here, setting it up this way. The character won't initially be visible. We also need to create a motion tween here. So since I have everything selected already, all I need to do is to choose insert, motion tween. And then as we see, we have a motion tween indicated by the blue background and the change in the layer icon. Moving our playhead down to frame 80, the final frame, we simply need to click and drag to wherever we want the character to stop on frame 80. So traveling off screen through our visual stage and then off screen on the other side. You'll notice here that when using a motion tween, we automatically get this motion guide. And using our selection tool, we can actually hover over this just as we would any shape and see that little arc appear. That indicates that we're able to click and drag to modify the path that the character actually would take. So let's do something like that. And to preview this, we can click and drag and see how the character does indeed adjust the position based upon that guide. We can also select the entire motion guide and move the entire thing up and down. In this way, we're able to keep the span of motion yet make further adjustments in terms of the positioning of the entire animation. I'm going to tweak our motion guide so that when the character comes in, he'll definitely come in on the pavement here. And then down here, I actually want this to be up a bit so we can tweak that as well. Going back over to frame 80, I'm going to select the character and using the free transform tool, I want to make the character bigger because he's actually closer to the screen at this point. So I'll make him slightly bigger simply by holding down shift as I click and drag the transform box around him. Now to preview, that looks pretty good. You can also go ahead and use the controls at the bottom of the timeline to play the entire timeline back. You may notice that the internal character movement that we created does not appear when we're previewing it on the main timeline here. That's due to the character itself being a movie clip symbol. Any animation within a movie clip symbol is not going to be visible because a movie clip symbol's timeline and the main timeline are not bound together in any way. So to actually see the animation, we'll have to preview this. To preview an animation, go to Control, Test. All right, that looked pretty good. Going back to our timeline, we could continue to tweak this. And a good way to do that is to change our easing properties for this tween. The use of easing allows you to apply more natural motion to your different animated tweens. In order to do that, one of the best things we can do is use the motion editor. To reveal the motion editor, I'm going to enlarge my timeline by clicking and dragging on that panel. I'll recenter my stage. When I double click on a motion tween, the motion editor reveals itself along with any of the properties that have been tweened across the animation. Use of the motion editor is not necessary to complete this tutorial. However, it's good to note that such advanced options exist if you want to explore further.
you'll notice here my x and y positions, and various transform properties such as scale x and y can all be adjusted through this advanced graph. Additionally, we're able to add a variety of other anchor points anywhere along the graph to make finely detailed changes. We can also go ahead and add prepackaged eases of various types that can be shown through these graphs here. Let's choose this one, and you can see that reflected on the graph. This is one way of enabling more natural movement within an animation, and the control you have over each individual property is vast. Again, these graphing functions within the motion editor are there for you if you want to play. However, you don't have to modify any of this stuff or even touch the motion editor to successfully complete this tutorial. To close this, all we need to do is double click on that motion tween once again, and it collapses back into the layer. I'm going to readjust the size of our timeline here. I'll change our view back to 100% and recenter. Let's lock down that character layer and unlock our cloud layer. These clouds are stationary, they're low to the ground. However, this one is higher up and I'm going to have it move slightly across the sky in the opposite direction of our character. So to do that, you can select any of the frames on this layer and choose Insert, Shape Tween. We're using a Shape Tween because this cloud object is a vector shape. You'll notice here that we have a broken Shape Tween. Let's select frame 80 and choose Insert, Timeline, Keyframe. The Shape Tween is now a solid arrow indicating that it is a complete and whole tween. And all we need to do at frame 80 is simply shift the cloud over to where we think it should be at the end of the animation. We can, of course, preview the entire thing again, either through the timeline control mechanism here or by once again going to control test. That looks great. So let's choose file, save, and our animation is now complete.